Oh, you know, I can't think of a better place for you to spend a little bit of time than here with me. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot. It's Thursday, March 3rd. Did I get the date right today? <laughs> So what do I do on this show? Well, I rummage around through the day. I'm looking at OTC stocks and penny stocks, just trading. And I find things that are interesting and I like to bring them to your attention. And today I found some stocks, three of them that were running, but not for the obvious reasons. And I'm going to share those with you right now. Yeehaw! Let's get this rodeo going. This is PSWW Principal Solar Inc. And of course, we're over here at the OTCMarkets.com website doing our due diligence. It's the only site I know of that's always current. Once you find fresh water, why go digging any more wells? <laughs> so we are looking at PSWW Principal Solar. Finished today just over six cents, 0 0.0611. Is currently at 85% up. I say currently because it was at just 90%. It's dropped just a wee bit. Is it going to drop again? <laughs> it is on the pink tier current. They got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. We like seeing these green ticks. This is verification work that the OTC market's doing in the background. Don't know exactly what, but it makes me feel good to see it. Now, this company likes to tell us that they are in the clean energy sector, and they are, as you would expect with a name like Principal Solar. However, they're not into solar. No, that's the one thing they're not into. What they're currently involved with is natural gas and oil and EV vehicles. But they're working with heavy duty, big truck electric vehicles. And we're going to get more into that. Now, there was no news today. There hasn't been news for two weeks. But there was this tweet. This tweet came out just five hours ago today. And it's based on this tweet, which came out eight months ago, back in July of 2021. Exciting PSWW announcement, Principal Solar, this company, and IPL Tech Electric to develop heavy duty EV trucks for North American markets. So this company had a plan that they told everybody about a long time ago about turning these big, already combustible engine trucks. We're not talking about making electric trucks, we're talking about converting them into electric. They have this plan to do that. So they came out with this tweet today. PSWW is expecting to have significant shareholder update in the next two weeks. That in itself is a catalyst in conjunction with the previously announced acquisition of Double H Services. This is a company that has trucks. They've got a business, they use the trucks for delivery, but this company wants those trucks. You can see where I'm going with this, right? So they made this deal a while ago. It closed not too long ago, but now they're telling us that they have some announcements to make. All the obvious catalysts, so you would think. Let's go take a look at that volume. Relative volume today was pretty good. You could call it a 10 bagger when it comes to volume. We went from 2.4 million to 24 million shares. That's a ton of extra shares. What is the share structure? We're not going to complain. We're not going to brag. We've got 138 million. That's roughly average. You know, you, you can make money with that. So let's not cry. Financials. Ooh. Okay. We got nothing on the annual and very little on the quarterly. Now it's not $5. There are three zeros they tell us to throw in down here. So that was $5,000 and it didn't cost him anything for that money. Whew. Thank God. So they need to be making some money, but we're not really looking at this for a long-term hold. We're looking at it as a play. We're looking at it to make money fast and get out. Any disclosures? I like to look at the disclosures. Their financials will be here, and as long as they're current, well, these are always current. But what I come to is down here, the SEC filings, and I'm particularly looking for an 8K. That is a material change. This is where they're going to list their acquisitions, their mergers, buying property, whatever. It could just be a chairman is fired or hired, but in either case, that's where I'm going to find the information. And that's why I look, because the 8Ks normally come out before the press release. So I could be one step ahead of the game. All right, so we got nothing here. What we got is the news. Now, they've got news here going all the way back to 2014. We're not going to go back that far. It picks up here. Uh, right here is where it changes from 2019 to 2021. And it's here back in July, uh, back when they 
made that first tweet that I showed you that they came out with their idea of working with these electric vehicle, big, heavy duty trucks. Then they made the deal, which we've seen there, with IPL Tech Electric to develop heavy duty EV trucks. Now that's their whole job. This is a company over in India. Let's take a look at this. Now granted, this is an old PR. This goes back eight months, but the information here is critical. This deal they made is literally the secret sauce. Without this, it just isn't a meal. It isn't going to work. So they tell us that they have executed a development agreement with India-based heavy electric vehicle maker IPL Tech Electric. And per the terms of the agreement, upon completion and development of a working prototype, Principal is going to earn the license rights to sell this technology to the United States. That's a huge market, folks. You're taking combustible engines and converting them to electric, which has got to be a lot cheaper than buying a brand new electric semi. Oh my goodness. Uh, it says that the company will receive a combination of exclusive and non-exclusive rights to commercialize IPLT's proprietary technologies for North American markets. Now, if with regard to IPL Tech Electric, they are an innovation first company that designs, develops, and manufactures the world's largest on-road electric trucks. They are fully operational and sustainable, and each electric truck in operation represents the carbon equivalent to saving 5,600 trees. That's pretty impressive. For months, we have been successfully operating a commercial fleet of trucks in the Indian market. Well, there you go working prototype, ta-da, they've got a working fleet. So we're not talking about a product that is theorized to work. This is working. Now we just got to get it over here, right? Uh, they tell us that we strongly believe in our partnership with Principal and our combined ability to deliver pure electric, zero tailpipe emissions, class A trucks to customers in North America. Yeah, so we are waiting for this technology to come out of this company to the USA and more pieces of the puzzle have been laid on the table and you can see it coming together right now. Let's take a look at another piece of news. The next piece of important news, they are doing things here, you know, getting small pieces together, but a big piece of news came out here in December, just last December the 21st, they finalized the deal to acquire Double H Service. Now, I looked around. This news here goes all the way back, as I said, to 2014, and it's not here. And I did browse around the internet, and I couldn't find any information for when they actually started to make the deal. In either case, this is when it finished. December 21st, they finally got a hold of Double H Services. Now, as I said, this is a company that has trucks. They've got a business using those trucks, but that's the piece they need for the technology company. You need some guinea pigs. You need something to work with. The next piece of uh, information that I want to share with you is their shareholder letter. I love shareholder letters. These are normally from the CEOs, the upper management. They do a great job of nutshelling everything they've been doing for months. They culminate it, show you what they've gotten accomplished, and then they tell you what they plan on doing. And coming from the CEOs and upper management means a lot more than just coming from me. So let's take a look at this one. Now this shareholder letter came out January 11th and they do a real good job of breaking it down, showing us the oil progress and the heavy duty EV progress. Quoting the CEO, during the first half of 2021, we transformed and elevated our business model and the scope of the company's trajectory, solidifying Principal Solar as an emerging leader in the renewable energy sector. We currently have five separate early stage subsidiaries and or strategic partnerships, several of which we believe can be scaled at an accelerated pace over the next 12 to 18 months. Now they broke this down into their two sectors, the heavy duty EV vehicles and the oil. The oil's kind of gotten snagged right now. Concerning the vehicles, we recently announced the finalization of the terms for our acquisition of Double H Services. Upon closing, we believe the acquisition will benefit Principal as Double H already possesses existing revenues, assets, and a customer base that's asking for environment-friendly solutions that can meet their logistic needs, which are currently being served by traditional diesel-fueled Class 8 trucks. 
semis, 18 wheelers. Uh, this company has 17 of those trucks and right now they're out and about working, doing whatever it is they do. No, they're not electric. They're still diesel fueled combustible engines. They're just doing their job until the next stage comes up for conversion, which leads us into the other piece of news to strategic investments and in ready to go heavy electric vehicle technologies. Their subsidiary Nextiel has made two investments in heavy electric vehicle conversion technology companies. One, e-truck transportation. E-truck is nearing completion of two hybrid class six demonstration vehicles and they've got their website now launched. The e-trucks hybrid conversion systems offer the potential to significantly reduce fuel cost without the need for the large charging infrastructure. I was just thinking about the plug that you'd have to put in on a semi. The other uh, deal that they made recently, the company received both exclusive and non-exclusive rights to manufacture and distribute fully electric heavy vehicles in North American markets through a licensing agreement with Infra Prime Logistic Technologies, the news we were just reading. The next piece of news that we really need to look at is that they have finished their offering. This is a piece of news that came out about 10 days ago and you wouldn't think was very important, but you know what? The truth of the matter is, this is the catalyst. At least that's my opinion. This is something that has been dragged out for a very long time and is just finished. Now, the date is February 24th, so it's not today's news. It's about 10 days old. But when you look at the chart, you're gonna see a correlation and well, two plus two does equal four. They had an offering which commenced on November 25th, 2020 and concluded on February 16th, 2022. They raised just over $8 million selling just over 96 million shares at 0 0.0895, almost nine cents. Look at the current price, folks. Six cents right now. Now, this is being sold for the last, well, almost two years for almost nine cents. Where's the price been all that time? I'm not sure, but right now, it is a done deal. The company has all this money that they can use to build out the rest of their company, pay off some debt, you know, do good things with it. And people are excited. Let's go look at that chart. You'll see what I mean. So this is the wonderful, wonderful chart of PSWW. And we're doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform. If you don't have one, you absolutely need one. And this one's at the best price you're gonna get. Go on over to TD Ameritrade. Get yourself a free account. They're not gonna ask for any money. They're not gonna force you to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use TOS as well. So this six month, Four hour chart shows us a high bubble all the way back at about 22 cents. She has fallen all the way down here to a low of just over one cents. And currently we are at just over six cents. She's been under the 200 most of this time. She's gotten close to it, but not very well. Had a lot of volume, got a little thin here, but for the most part, the volume has been strong. MACD has been under the signal line for a very long time until hmm, right around this time and it's starting to launch. Let's come in on that 20 day, one hour look. All right, you can definitely see she didn't have a lot of enthusiasm under the 200 for most of this time, trying to break through, had a little tag, a second tag, pushed, and then what day do you think this is? That's right. That's the 24th. That's when the press release came out saying the public offering is over. We're done selling 93 million shares at nine cents. Whatever that is worth to the investors, it was worth something. There was no doubt about it. There was no other news. There were no tweets. Do, 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 do. This thing is off and running. But speaking of tweets, you can see the volume today. Today's when the tweet came out. There's a huge extra amount of oomph right there. That's what you call an octane boost. That is just tearing it up. Look at this tsunami down here. That is ripping off the beach high into the air. We have fire far above the 70. We're up here at 87. That is on the one hour. Let's come down to the five minute, five day. Oh, that is so pretty. Look folks, she's had dips little tiny dips. There's just nothing big here. Very strong price. Most of the time it is sitting on the 10 day SMA. When it does start to fall, it lands on the 20. 
you never see it get close to the 50. You can tell how strong a price growth is by which SMA it gives power over to. This has broken through the 10 a couple times. Right here it hit the 20, right there it hit the 20, and right there it just broke the 20. But that's it. And the 20 is not near as strong as the 50. So if the price can be held up by a thin 20, you know it's got strength. And if it's floating on top of the 10, yeehaw, we've got exactly what we want. So we've had a lot of volume this day. However, you can see that it is rolling down on the MACD, but the price is still going up. We're getting a divergence here. You're getting less volume, but the price is still being pushed up. Value is being seen. That's a good token sign. Now we did have a fall here. Just at the end of the day, she turned everything down. You can see just a little bit of turn down, a dip and a strong dip. <clears throat> However, she does look strong to me. Now I don't know why she's running for so many days after that news. The tweet obviously gave it a boost. Maybe he did that on purpose, but we do have another catalyst. We got a PR coming out in two weeks. That's a long time to hold this. I personally, I personally would expect this to come down just because it's not a very strong catalyst. And you know, just looking, if this is the bottom right down here, let, let me get my line. If this is the bottom of the surge where it started and it went all the way up to there, I try to find the middle about right there, I guess. And I would expect this to come down here. If it doesn't have any more catalysts, if there's no more tweets, I would expect this to actually come down to about four, three, four, 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 five. I just spitballed that in there, but the center of whatever that is, that is honestly where I would look for it to dip. So I would not be surprised to see this dip, but keep your eye on it. After five days of steady growth, showing all the SMAs going in the right direction in the right placement, this one deserves your attention. So the next horse we're saddling up for this rodeo is FOMC, FOMO Core. Finished the day at a lovely price, 0.0015. 66% gains on the pink tier current has a transfer agent verified, but I don't see a verified profile here. Now I do prefer to see a verified profile. It is information you want verified, but in all honesty, I've never seen a company go out of business or go under because they didn't have it. I just feel better seeing it there. So FOMO Core is a holdings company. To be more precise, they are an incubation accelerator company. They go out and look for little companies that got good ideas and they help them. They give them the investment and the support they need and they help them to grow fast and they make money doing that. Now the company had news come out today. They had a few pieces of news. I'm not sure if it was four or five or six, but they had lots of news come out today. Some of it was for future investors and some of it was for current investors. In both cases, I guess it got people excited and the stock moved today. So what was the relative volume around this company? Well, normally she does 69 million shares a day, not a drop in a bucket by any means, but today she did over a half a billion shares, 574 million. You've got to take notice of that. Her share structure. Oh God, did we have to take notice of that? Oh, Hitting the head with a hammer, 7.1 billion shares. Oh my goodness, folks. It's a ton, absolutely a ton. Uh, we're not going to look at the financials here because they're not as clear as what they put out in their news press today. They acquired a company that has three companies inside of it not too long ago, and they finalized the deal, and that company's making them money. Now they tell us here in 2019, the company was making $90,000. One year later, they doubled that to almost $200,000. Another year goes by, they double it again to just under $500,000. And now currently it's quadrupled to $1.6 million. Folks, the company's growing fast. That's called exponential growth. It's getting bigger and bigger, faster and faster. So that is their financials and they are looking good. Now, if we take a look at their disclosures, I do know that they've got some current ones. There's one of those eight K's I'm always telling you about. And I would normally jump into it, but they've actually got a news press covering that. So we'll just go that route. 
Now they haven't got a lot of news, but it's all current. This only goes back to December. And we can see that here, Himalaya invest in Gen Bio to promote global wellness. Now, I did look at this. They have another subsidiary that I just can't find a whole lot of information about. And that's not really old news, but this is a company that is working with a biotech, working with a molecular structure for a product that they're going to sell in a beverage. And it's a wellness product. Like I said, there's not a lot of information around it. What there is a lot of information around is their Smart Solution Technologies deal and company. They started this deal back here in December and then finally closed it just a couple days ago in February. However, you would have thought the deal was closed back here because all of this time, which isn't long, a few months, they've been doing stuff. They have actually been progressing and doing things. And this newsletter gives us a great outline of what this company is all about. Now, as I said, there are three companies wrapped up in one. You have Smart Solutions Technologies, EIC, and IAQ Tech. They're all one, at least together as a company that they acquired. Now, Smart Solutions Technologies is a service provider, while EIC and IAQ provide products. They tell us that Smart Solutions Technologies is the region's premier audio-visual integration company that has been serving schools and institutions throughout Pennsylvania and Ohio since 1996. SST was one of the first companies to offer interactive whiteboards for kindergarten through 12th grade market. Now they are working on these disinfecting robots. And that's what they tell us up here. EIC and IAQ Tech are offering ultraviolet disinfection robots designed by Ava Robotics, a leading provider of intelligent workplace robots. And they're going to be using these in schools, sports venues, uh, departments of corrections, anywhere that is, well, crowded with people, right? Then they tell us they've got two other products that they are working with here. And real briefly, IAQ Tech is devised a air purifier for your car. Doesn't need any ducking. It works 24 seven, removes odor, cleans the air through ionization. Then they have a secondary product here called Pure Air Personal Device. This is a wearable air purifier that creates a safe personal breathing zone by repelling particles from your breathing space. Using ion-based active air technology, Pure Air Personal creates a three-foot clean air zone or a bubble, reducing your exposure to dust, pet dander, and other allergens. Notice they didn't say anything about COVID. <laughs> Pure Air Personal delivers all day protection with a rechargeable battery providing over 24 hours of use per charge. It includes a USB charging cable and a breakaway net cord for comfort and convenience. So you can see they do have different products. They have services. They've got a lot of things going on right now. So that just leaves the current news, which must be real important because they actually posted it one, two, three, four times, FOMO cancels reverse stock split. Now it is big news, especially if you're already invested. And the one we looked at about the finances, that's for everybody else. That was good news for us. So let's take a look at this piece of news. They tell us that the company has canceled the reverse split that was approved on February 1st of this year. Just missed that one. FOMO's goal in the next coming months is to uplist to a higher exchange. And that's normally why you do do a reverse split. You got to get that up to $3 if you want to get on the NASDAQ. So unless they do a reverse split to kick that up, they better have some magic in their pot to get that price up there. Now they could just be going to the QB. They don't have to be going to the NASDAQ. The QB, you only need to be one penny. One penny and your records have to be audited. So we would have to see that all of their financials are 10 Qs and 10 Ks and no longer disclosures. So let's go take a look at that chart because I know they had some good gains today. So that is a six month, four hour chart for FOMC. And all the way back here, we were at double zero three and then we fell down to triple zero five and we've had a very strong boost just like the last company. Now this one has been fighting. You can see many attempts to get through that 200 and even when she gets far above it, she starts falling back, which has been sad. The volume was stronger earlier than it is right now, but 
She has come over the signal line after being down for at least a month. She's coming up with a vengeance and flame. Let's check out that 20 day, one hour look. She's been under the 200, fighting the 50. Fighting the 50, trying to get above it. She got above that 50 with some strong momentum, carried it right across that 200, and then flared today. Just took off. People were excited. They weren't going to lose their shares. You can see, let me see, this goes back to, well, now isn't that interesting? That's February 24th. This climb is the same time period as the last stock very interesting. MACD has taken off very strongly and the RSI is still looking good. Let's look at that five day, five minute. All right, she broke the 200 four days ago, has been pushing above that. She came down and crashed through the 50. So she was hanging on to the 20 here, lost her footing after consolidating, going sideways over and over, just consolidating. People weren't sure what to do. Once she broke that 50, it, the game changed again. It took off. Now, of course, the news came out today, which is probably all it needed. No reverse split. Boom! It took off. It started the day at 0 .001 and went to 0 .0017. So that's a 70% gain before it dropped. It hit its high there at about 11.30 in the afternoon. And it kept about 50% of its gains. So it looks strong right now. We see it's holding its price as the MACD is falling. The volume has fallen off strongly. Now remember, this was about their finances. This was about their share structure. This wasn't about any new deals or any new contracts or anything like that. It's just showing that they're on a good road. So I like the way the stock looks. I think it has potential, but I still think we need something else to happen for it to start growing. I wouldn't be surprised to see if this dipped just a little bit more before she started to grow again. Just my two cents worth. The last prancing pony that we're going to look at is BRZV. This is Breezer Ventures. Finished today at 12 cents and only 20% up. I'm almost sure that was higher today, and we're going to find out when we look at the chart. She is on the pink tier. She is limited information, though. That means they're late filing something. Once they get it caught up, they'll go back up to pink. However, what's interesting is they've only got three pieces of news, and one came out September. That's the oldest, and it was about them getting back to pink current. So I'm not sure what's going on right now, but whatever it is, they need to get it handled ASAP. If you persist on being late, filing your filings for too long, they will pull you off the open market. They'll not delist you. They'll put you on the expert market. You can't buy the shares. You can't sell the shares. Not until they catch up with their filings. And once they do, they'll get back on the open market and everything's normal. Now they do have a verified profile. They got a transfer agent. So all of that looks good but they are considered a shell risk, which isn't surprising. That means they're not reporting revenues and they haven't been doing anything. I don't know where they've been or what they've been doing, but it's just a blank check. The news that came out today is going to change everything. It will change the revenues. It will change the direction of the company. And it's definitely going to change that description. No, they are not into oil or natural gas and they are not working with China or the Middle East. No, not at all. They have got something completely different going on. They had news come out today. It was exciting and it shows us exactly where their head is at. So what was the relative volume today? Oh my God. Boom. Folks, look at that. That is a thousand times her normal volume from 3,500 to 3.8 million shares. That's over a thousand times. That's incredible, folks. That's mind-blowing volume right there. Let's hope for a low float. That would just be the icing on the cake. Boom! Look at that, 10 million. Now, normally I go up here to the unrestricted shares. They got nothing there. But this date is very current. That's just a couple weeks ago. So this is probably the float. 10 million float out of 109 million. Goodness gracious, insiders like this stock, obviously. 10 million float with 1,000 times her normal volume. I guarantee you, this was a lot higher today than 20%. All right, we know they've got no financials and her disclosures. We got anything new down here? Nah, we got nothing new down here. All right, 
let's go take a look at that news then. So as I said, they got three pieces of news. They had this news back here in September, which said we got back on the pink market, but they're not there anymore. Then they said they were in negotiations to acquire an ultra premium distilled spirits marketing company. And today they came out and said they closed that deal. That deal was with Magnum Finest Spirits. Magnum is a distilled spirits and marketing company offering products with centuries long history of outstanding quality. Now what separates Magnum from the pack is innovative environmentally conscious packaging using bag in a box, BIB technology and innovative billboard style labeling. Magnum 1770 branded products include exceptional bourbon, premium vodka, and esteemed gin, as well as trending flavored spirits. Breezer enters into this acquisition with the intentions of funding further development, inventory, marketing, and brand awareness, and a full national launch. Magnum has offices in Las Vegas, Nevada, and Southern California. And they go on to also tell us that Breezer anticipates a name and symbol change along with this. So there you have it. They've made an acquisition. They're getting into spirits, high quality spirits spirits and they're going to do a national campaign to push it. We do like to drink, right? So they should do well with this. Let's go see what that chart shows and see if it was higher today as I remember. Well, that's an interesting chart for BRZV. That's a six month, four hour chart going uphill. We got a low bubble in this corner at about a penny and a half and now she's at uh, 12 cents. She has been climbing, had a huge jump here, and this was when that press release came out in September saying, we are now pink current. You see how excited it is? Going pink current is a big deal. This jumped from eight cents to 36 cents. You're talking over 400% over a matter of days. She has fallen, come all the way back down to the 200 and has been bouncing on that 200. This is where she wants to sit. She's been here for over 30 days. And today, finally some news. <laughs> I mean, there is nothing to be read. There's nothing to know, but the stock has had a lot of activity and stayed above the 200. And right now it is sitting on the 200 and with today's acquisition news, it did a good jump. MACD has finally gotten on top of the signal line, though the RSI is still not showing a lot of excitement. It's come down to the 20 day one hour. EGADs, that's what you get when you have 3,500 shares. See that little itty bitty blue line? You can barely see that compared to the 3.8 million shares that came in a very short period of time today. So she was falling, actually hit a low bubble today. Yeah, she did of seven and a half cents roughly, went all the way to 23 cents. You're talking 300% and she settled down here at 12, which is just under 100%. So she had a huge jump. That is on the one hour. Let's come down to the five day, five minute. So there's your low bubble. She started climbing very nicely. So she hit her high and then started to pull back started to roll across and fell again. Did she keep 50% of her gains? No, she threw away more than 50% of her gains. So you've got a company that has an acquisition of a, a bourbon, vodka, gin company. They're selling these spirits, quality spirits, 1770. All they need is a good national campaign. You get that stuff out there, it will start to sell. Do I think the company's gonna tear it up? No, I really don't think it's going to tear it up. I don't think it's a, a, a company that has that kind of potential, but she is cheaply priced. She's had some good highs. She has a very, very low float. And when she bounces, she bounces nice. We had a 400% bounce in September on the pink news. We had a 300% bounce today on the acquisition news. And there will be a PR when they go pink again. They have to go pink again or they're going to go the other way and that will probably get a bounce. Whether it'll be this big or not, I don't know. So keep your eye on BRZV. It's got a super low float. You need to put that on your watch list just for that case because if they come out with a big press release about some big deal, you know, 7-Eleven taking over or something, I don't know, whatever it is, the stock has got a float that can make it launch and you're going to want to keep up with that. BRZV, super low float for the future play. 
So there you've got three stocks that we're running today for various reasons, not all of them obvious, but you're going to find these every day just by doing what you're doing, trading. Pay attention to the information you see. You're over at the OTC markets, run over to current status and see who's got the most trades. You're on thinkorswim, pull up a scanner, see who's got the biggest percentage gains. Take those tickers and go look. Go to the OTC markets, see if there's any filings or any news. You never know what you're going to find. Due diligence, it's your shovel for finding gold. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.